Hello and welcome to Nicholas Genetics Lessons and this video is going to be about population genetics and today I have prepared two easy multiple choice questions for you. I hope everyone would be able to choose the correct answer. If you need the time, I recommend you to stop video here, read the questions, choose your correct answer and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. And here is the first question. Godfrey Hardy and Wilhelm Weinberg concluded that gene pool frequencies are, and here is the three answers to choose from. So answer A, inherently stable, answer B, inherently unstable, and answer C, impossible to determine since we can only observe phenotypes and not genotypes. And the correct answer would be A. Gene pool frequencies are inherently stable and uh, usually we can find uh, uh, gene pools that is unstable uh, but uh, such gene pools would be under certain influences of environment. For example, some genotypes would have better fitness or there would be assortative matings. Other factors like uh, small population size may influence that uh, allelic frequencies may change from one generation to another generation. But normally, uh, if population is large and if we assume that there is no uh, mutation, no preferential matings, and other factors that may influence allelic frequencies in gene pool, pool would be inherently stable. And second question, which of the following statements is true of the Hardy-Weinberg equation? That is p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals to 1. So answer A. The p represents the frequency of the recessive allele for the specific trait in a population. Answer B. In order to use the equation, you have to know all the genotype frequencies first. Answer C. The equation allows you to discover the genotype frequencies if you know the phenotype frequencies. And let's consider the first uh, answer. And actually, P, P squared, stands for the homozygous dominant genotype. For example, if we have in our gene pool two alleles that would be, for example, uh, dominant allele A and recessive allele A. So P squared stands for the homozygous uh, dominant uh, variant and 2PQ squared stands for the heterozygous genotype and Q squared stands for the homozygous recessive genotype. And as you see, uh, answer A is wrong answer. So we can cross out this answer and we have two answers to choose from. Answer B, in order to use the equation, you have to know all the genotype frequencies first. And actually, as you see, these two uh, classical Mendelian genetics uh, genotypes would represent one phenotype. And this is going to be dominant uh, phenotype and uh, homozygous dominant and heterozygous would look alike and homozygous recessive would look differently. And actually we need this formula in order to find uh, frequency of the uh, homozygous dominant genotype and heterozygous genotype and we can do it um, even if we know only frequency of the homozygous recessive uh, genotype. In our formula it is Q squared. So we can cross out this answer. So we left with the only answer that is correct. And this is answer C. The equation allows you to discover the genotype frequencies if you know the phenotype frequencies. And this is true if we know that homozygous recessive genotype represent, uh, for example, 10% of the population. The other two um, genotypes represent one phenotype, that is 90% of the population frequency. 
And uh, when Hardy and Weinberg invented um, this formula, we also can predict now uh, genotype frequencies, expected genotype frequencies of the homozygous dominant genotype and heterozygous genotype separately. So the correct answer would be C. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.